chapter nine, reducing project duration. Now, why might a company want to reduce a project's duration? Well, you've got to think about this from a couple perspectives. The temptation in this course is to think about it purely from the project management team. However, what you have to keep in mind is you're a part of a larger business. You're just doing a project within that business. So your time, your resources spent, uh, the labor you put into it, the capital you put into it, into your project that is, has a cost. And that cost hits the bottom line of the greater organization. So sometimes you might be put in a situation where they want you to hurry up. <laughs> So your superiors over you as project manager uh, may need you to pivot, uh, narrow the scope, uh, really drill down your subject, does this sound familiar, um, and get the project done a little bit quicker and a lot less expensive. So where are we now? Well, we're right here in chapter nine, reducing the, the project duration. And you guys are very familiar with the arrow node right now. So this was, you know, in line kind of with the managing risk. And then we're going to come back in on chapter 13 and do monitoring progress. But way back here, we were doing organization. And we, we're going to next start talking, go back to this vein here and talk about a project manager and teams and then outsourcing. And then we'll bring it all together in chapter 13. So we're doing this top half of the node. Uh, we've done the middle here, and then starting next week, we'll go back here and then come back down where we put everything together and where we monitor. And then hopefully we can close out some projects and talk about a couple other things. Um, just a quick note here. I did pare down these slides um, pretty significantly because I, there are some things that I think to be important and some other things that I think are a little extraneous. Um, but what you have to do is keep uh, a perspective now of backing back out of being on this project yourself and looking at it from a holistic sense of being, the, say, the corporation that you're working for um, in a special project. So what would be the rationale for that business, that corporation, for reducing a project duration? Well, to, to reduce it, it's called crash. It's a term that is merged in project management lexicon for shortening the duration of an activity or project beyond when it normally can be done. So you're running out of resources, you're running over budget, uh, they for some reason need this project to wrap up sooner, whatever it is, they may crash it. Now again, a lot of the project management, is, as they say here, lexicon, really I would say project management language isn't being able to understand that. So if someone's coming in shorten your duration, that's called a crash. Now, the reasons for attempting to reduce the duration of a project are there might be time to market pressures. They need it sooner. It might be some sort of unforeseen delays. We have like a post-COVID world here. Uh, I think we all understand supply chain a little bit better. Maybe it's something to do with that. Um, there might be incentives in the contract. You could get a bonus for an earlier completion. Uh, you could get a penalty for a later completion. Uh, impose deadlines and contract commitments. They've got to move your project up to be able to hit some sort of deadline or contract. Uh, extenuated uh, overhead costs, both direct and indirect. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a later slide. Pressure to reassign resources to other projects. Needs will arise that are parallel to your project. There, in this course, we have several different projects that's being presented um, to your, you know, to me or, or your professor as, um, you know, your boss, let's say, and you're the project manager, and you've got to convince your boss that this project's worth pursuing. Um, now. That project needs to be worth pursuing in a manner that makes sense for the whole corporation, not just for the project management team. So there are options for accelerating your project completion. Um, basically, you can put more fuel on the fire. You can add resources, so put less constraints on your resources. Or you could outsource some of the project work and make it a little easier on the team. You could schedule some overtime, give people more time to work on it. Uh, establish a core project team, i.e. break people off of other responsibilities and have them just on this project, or do it twice, fast and correctly. So um, just put more emphasis on it. Now, that's the first way, is just putting more fuel in the fire and offering more resources or different options to use resources. Or you could intentionally um, constrain the resources. You could try to find ways to improve project team efficiency, whereas you get more output from less input, i.e. less people, less hours. You find a way, say you have a team member that's not working well with others. You remove them from the equation. Perhaps you remove them from, from the corporation. Remember that when we're evaluating our teammates here. You improve the project team efficiency by, say, trading out one team member for another. You fast track it. 
Um, you tell people, here's your new deadline, get it done. Um, you use critical chain management. I, you, you say, hey, here's what you can have, here's what you can't have, get it done. You reduce the project scope. That should sound familiar. I say that a lot in class. You narrow down the project. It gets a lot simpler. You can define you know, down to the nitty gritty and get more done. And once you take something that's broad and break it down into smaller pieces, you can wrap your arms around it and wrap your mind around it a little more easily. And then also understand what the cost is in terms of your labor time, uh, what kind of investments it's going to need. You'll be able to describe that a lot better. Um, or you could just, you know, say, hey, you know what? You're doing like really high quality work. It's okay if it's medium quality work. You can compromise quality, which if you start to think about your end user probably isn't the best thing to do. Now, let's look at a cost graph. Um, man, so when we talk costs in here, there's a, there's true financial costs. Now I'm thinking big picture costs. So, you, you know, when you think total costs, you think uh, fixed costs plus variable costs, right? Well, when you're in a corporation, so imagine you're part of a corporation. So the corporation itself has costs that are not directly related to your project, right? They're running other facilities, operations, et cetera, et cetera, that have nothing to do with your project. Well, those are costs to a corporation still, and you're part of that corporation. So you have to be wary of the indirect costs within the corporation. You also have to be wary of, uh, wary rather, um, you might be weary too, of the direct costs, okay? Those are costs tied directly to your project. So if you think of it this way, there can be internal costs that are directly tied to your project, and then there could be what's called internal external costs in that they're internal to the corporation, but they're external to your project team. Those are indirect costs. Now, over time, indirect costs tend to rise, and the direct costs of a project tend to be high to start and tail off. Now, total costs in this example is not fixed cost plus variable cost, but because we're, we, there are still fixed and variable costs and direct and indirect costs. However, we're looking at all costs, total costs related directly to the project, and total costs related, not related directly to the to the project, and that's indirect costs. Keep in mind, there's variable and fixed costs in these. It's just they're direct or indirect. They're internal or external to the project. Either way, direct cost plus indirect cost equals total cost. So this line plus that line is here. This line right here plus that line is here. This line right here plus that line is there. Now, what does this have to do with project costs and duration? Okay. You've added these lines up. You know this one tends to go down over time. This one tends to go up over time. As the project stretches out, stretches out in duration, these could be months. It could be units later on we'll look at. And these are costs in terms of dollars. All right, so this line plus that line is this line. Now, just look at this total cost line. Tell me what you see here. Okay, well, it's kind of high. It starts going down over time. That's great. We're building efficiency. That's awesome. Look how low it is right here. Uh-oh, the costs are starting to go up. Look at this correlation between indirect cost and total cost. Anyone worth their salt in financial analysis is going to look at this total cost line and say, ooh, ooh, okay, okay, going down, going down. What, what's happening here? We need this project to stay here, so that means we need this project to wrap up in 10 months. That's essentially what this graph is saying, if this is months down here, not units. So when you start to see costs starting to creep up on the project, the return on the project starts to get less. So while initially, let's say we gave this project, oh, 14 to 16 months to finish, we know our costs are starting to get a little bit out of hand, okay? We need to encourage these people. We need to crash this project to end around month 10, if we want to stretch the example here. So again, graphs should make your life easier. It starts to show, mm, this doesn't need to be a 14 to 16 month project. This needs to be a 10 month project. Now, let's break down indirect costs and direct costs a little bit more. So project indirect costs are costs that cannot be associated with any particular work package or activity within the project. Examples are overhead costs, such as your supervisor, the administration of the corporation, consultants, and, and interest um, that you're incurring, say, on loans. These are costs... Um, that vary directly with time. They go up over time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I see here? They go up over time, indirect costs. Okay. Project costs, that's those internal to the team costs. So those project costs are costs that are assigned directly to a work package and activity. Examples are labor, materials, equipment, and subcontractors. This represents normal costs, low cost, efficient methods for a normal period of time. So if they're efficient costs, look what they do over time. They start to go down. Okay, You get more efficient as you do this project. You spend less time on it, 
because you're getting better at it. You see over here, you don't understand the project. So you got to put a lot of time in it. That's kind of where we are in the class. Okay. But as you did this more, you would be like, oh no, here's our project. Here's what we're going to do. You don't have to spend like all day trying to figure that out. You have it figured out and then you can get more productive and thus your costs go down. Okay. So you've got costs that aren't tied directly to the project and costs that are tied directly to the project. Either way, whether they're indirect or direct costs, you're going to have an optimum point that you need to wrap up this project before the costs start going back up. And a lot of times that's related to indirect costs. I know that kind of stinks for you as a like, project manager within a corporation. You're doing a great job because your costs getting lower, but because of things out of your control, your indirect costs, you need to wrap up this project sooner. You need to crash it. Hmm. Learning, aren't we? Constructing a project cost duration graph like this, okay? The project cost duration graph is used to compare additional cost alternatives for benefits. Three major steps are required to construct a project cost duration graph. Find the total direct cost for the selected project directions. So that's pretty easy. You can say, hey, here are my costs direct related directly to the project. And what you're going to see is they're likely, as you get more efficient, going down over time, as we see here. Okay. Second, you're going to find the total indirect cost for the selected project durations. They tend to go up over time within a corporation. Now, here's why I pared down these slots. These costs you don't have in many cases because we're working for, let's say, a fictitious corporation in this particular uh, class right now. Uh, whereas in the real world, let's say you were doing a research project for... Mm, I always use this example, but hey, I used to work at Michelin North America and costs that are related, not related to your project, but that Michelin occurs, keeping the lights on over your project, um, you know, keeping a supervisor above you, that type of thing, they tend to go up over time. So they're going to want you to wrap up that project sooner rather than later. So while there's downward pressure on costs directly related to your project, there's upward pressure on indirect costs. This gives you an optimum time to end a project. So you sum the direct and indirect costs for these selected durations. So this point right here, okay, let's see, 38 and six months, okay, and eight at six months. So 38 plus eight equals, you see 38 plus eight is, you know, uh, 46, hey, that kind of works. I just made that up. 46 is about right there. That'd be about right. That's your total cost. So this point plus that point is this point. And then you put enough points in here and you connect the dots, my favorite kindergarten game, and you've got a total cost line, a direct cost line, an indirect cost line, so you add them all up. Now, what, how do we determine the activities to shorten? Which activities should we shorten? Look for critical activities that can be shortened with the smallest increase in cost per time unit. So where's, where's some places we could trim the fat that wouldn't devastate the project? You have to make some assumptions here, though. That cost-time relationship is linear. Well, that's what we're seeing up here in our graphs, and I'll show you another one here in a second. Normal time assumes low-cost, efficient methods to complete the activity. Okay, Crash time represents a limit. That's crash is shortening it. The greatest time reduction possible under realistic conditions. Okay, Ideally, I'm sorry, I just changed slides. I didn't want to. Ideally, this is where I wanted to go. Ideally... You wouldn't absolutely devastate the project by ending here, but ideally you would end here at this low cost point. Okay, So that's where you would crash it. Slope represents cost per time of units. So if you look at the slope of this line, you can see costs are coming down. It bottoms out. This is the low point, and then cost starts going up. By You, know, you look at that slope, cost is going up. That's why graphs are your friend. They tell a story just by looking at them. All right. Uh, and then all acceler accelerations must occur within normal and crash time. So you wouldn't want to cut costs by doubling everybody's overtime because that would, well, raise costs directly related to the graph. You want to keep those low, but you have to find a way to have a happy medium. Now, you might end up with a graph like this. Let's say this is a scenario where um, the normal cost of a project would be around $400 um, per activity duration. So... Uh, these are things that you are doing. So more things that you're doing as you go to the right. Costs are going up to the left axis here, the vertical axis. Um, normal cost would be around 400 and you're checking in around 800. A corporation is going to be like, oof, you're double where you should be. We need to crash at this point. We need to get you back to, on to a normal point, but you're not going to do that overnight. Just, if you're here, you're here. That's where that dot is. But I need you here. We have to figure out a way to get you to a no more normal point. We've got to look at the rise over run, the cost slope. So the slope of this line. 
we need it to be negative, we need it to be going down. So you take your crash cost, you're over, all right, so they're deciding to crash you. We're going to crash you at this point. And then you subtract out your normal point, which should be 400, so 800 minus 400. Then you divide that by the normal time, okay, uh, where you were at this point. Uh, I'm excuse, where we want to, let me rephrase that, where we want to be at a normal cost. It's realistic. Remember how we are just talking about, hey, you don't want to crash this project and just ruin it. Let's say, hey, in five more units, when we get to 10, we could be down at this normal point if we do X, Y, Z. Well, where do you want to be? Subtract where you are. So you end up with 400 divided by 5, which is $80 per unit of time. That tells you how much you need to cut your project activity. So every time you do something, it needs to be $80 less expensive. Okay, so we say, hey, the slope represents the cost per time we need to cut. This is the acceleration in which we do it. We think it's realistic within five activities. So we're at 800. We want to get to 400. We're going to do it in the next five weeks, let's say. Let's say these are weeks. Uh, in the next five weeks, we're going to get down to 400, back to our normal point. Here's our plan. And here's the amount of money we need to cut out of what we're spending right now each week. Okay, it's a little simplistic. That could be five days and 10 days. This could be five tasks and 10 tasks. Let's, let's, let's go with five weeks and 10 weeks. And in five weeks, we're going to cut $80 per week um, back to get back to our normal cost. You could be asked to do that, and that is an administrator, uh, a supervisor coming in saying, i got to crash your project. You've got to get this done, and if you don't get this done, we're going to pull the plug on the whole project and move you to somewhere else or talk about your performance. So crashing can happen at any point. This is a good, good example of it being double the cost. And so where we want to end up is the normal point off the crash point back down to 400. So we get a control cost by how much? $80 per unit of time. So in five days or 10 days, you know, we got to cut it by $80 a day or five weeks and 10 weeks, we got to cut it by $80 a week, um, so on and so forth. I think you get the point there. Um, then we're taking a look at another project cost duration. Um, and it could be it could be unit based. I think back up here we were talking about uh, weeks and days, uh, project duration. Yeah, we said months here. Now look at the x-axis, the the horizontal axis. We're talking in units. Okay. So, whoops, jumped ahead. You could. So where are these points coming from? Well, this table. Okay. So you need to know. Okay, to produce twenty five or excuse me. For a duration of 25 days, we have direct costs that are 450, indirect costs that are 400, total costs are 850. You can come over here and graph that right here, okay? Um, so 25, that's 850, um, total costs, 850, indirect 400 and 450, so indirect is 400 and it's 450. You can see what these lines are about to do, they're about to cross. So again, your direct costs related to your project, you're getting more efficient, starting to come down. Your total indirect costs, the longer you go, start to rise. There's more overhead. There's more people in the project. There's more cost associated with it. Um, but ultimately, what we're looking at is the total project cost here. And very early on in these duration units, you see it bottom out here. This is the optimum point to finish up the project, to crash it. Okay, But you can see it going up over time. The longer you do this, the more costly this project becomes. So one way to be able to graph this is to know your costs for duration. Now, you're like, okay, how does this apply to me in this class? How am I gonna do this? Um, we don't have a scenario where I say, hey, you've gotta crash this project, at least not yet. However, in the final presentation, if I said, mm, your costs get a little high here, how about if we take this 10 week project and make it a six week project? What's your plan for that if you could do it? So it's a contingency plan, which we've talked about before in this class. So look, just have an idea of what your project duration is. And these are, these are basically, let's say, per day. Um, in 22 days, my total cost is $775. It's higher before and it's higher after. That is an optimum point to end your project. I can tell you right now, if you can get your cost broken down to this level, you're likely going to get an A on the final presentation and on the final project. So break your project down. Narrow your scope. This is me challenging you right now to crash your own project. Narrow your scope to a point that you can schedule every minute, every hour, you know, every day, every cost of input 
to a point that you know what your total cost is given the direct and indirect cost. Now the challenge is in a course like this condensed thing where you're not actually in a corporation, you're just kind of pretending to be one, you're doing a project for me, you don't know all your indirect costs, okay? That's why I'm, I'm acknowledging that right now and that's why I trimmed down this slide set significant. So for you to benefit from that, this presentation needs to be a little bit shorter. So let's get on with it. Now, what are your practical considerations when you want to crash a, uh, a project? Well, you need to be using a project cost duration graph, okay? You need to be doing something like this and then giving me this and saying, well, that's the low point. Now, keep in mind, you don't know all your indirect costs. So if you just want to project what your indirect costs you can be, but just keep in mind, I'm not requiring that you have this graph or this table in your final project. I just need you to know that this can happen. What are your crash times? Um, what kind of time frame do you have uh, to recover? Is it five days? Is it five weeks? You know, what is it in terms of the activity duration? Um, there's a linearity assumption, meaning you think this line's gonna continue to go down, you think this line's gonna continue to go up, and once they cross, this is gonna be going up. You need to find the optimal point here. Um, the choice of activities to crash or revisit, you gotta find what you can cut to say get this Oh, let's say, where is it, where is it, where is it? I've gone past it, forgive me. Uh, to get this $80, where do you go to get that? Where is that? So you have to know your project really well, so you choose the right activities to crash to get that $80, let's say. Time reduction decisions and sensitivity, what does this do to my project? Um, does it does it kneecap it so bad there's no way it's getting finished? Um, you could not make it to the proposal stage because your project's so bad, okay? You could not make it to the proposal stage that your project's so bad. And what would happen in that scenario is I, as your supervisor, would pull your team apart and put you on different teams so you can help them and then put you into projects that I think could get more return on investment and or be more efficient that would do it at a lower cost. That happens all the time. Some projects are not worth pursuing for 16 weeks. Some, people, some projects aren't worth pursuing for 16 minutes. That's why I'm asking you to narrow your scope so you can make sure you've got something that's worth pursuing and that can be done in a realistic return on investment. So what if cost, not time, is the issue? The commonly used options for cutting costs are reducing the project scope. Aha, we've talked about that, right? Aha. Have an owner take on more responsibility. Have, have someone you're already paying a salary to do more. Um, you can overwork your people there, though. Outsource project activities or even the entire project. Put it outside the, the corporation. Find somebody else that can do it more efficiently that has a more competitive advantage. And brainstorm ways to have cost savings. There's at some point in your project you need to you know be close to the end and then have a very you know spirited discussion with your teams about, okay, uh, we have this completed. You know, temptation is just to turn it in and not even look at it, but go back and look. Are there ways we can make this more efficient? I give points for clever. So if you find ways to make it more efficient, you could reduce your project duration, which then would help the total cost and specifically the direct cost related to your project and give it a much more likely, you know, higher likelihood of being approved. It's a very quick look at chapter nine, reducing project duration. It does not replace the reading. So make sure you're getting on that. I'll see you in the next chapter.